The Mini Hatch is a true original, especially in this three-door form. In this revised guise, the third generation F56 series version has become smarter and more sophisticated, and can be more individual too. Plus, some refettling work has been done on the punchy range of eager three- and four-cylinder engines. In short, this car claims to have come of age. One of these just has to put a smile on your face when you drive it. If in a mini hatch the overall feeling you're getting is uh, just of another super mini wearing a cute suit, you'd have to question this car's place in the overall scheme of things. Fortunately though, this third generation F56 model still delivers the same infectious naughtiness that loyal owners love so much. There's still the same darty steering, the same quick fire throttle, and at least if you're not very careful when it comes to sorting out the spec sheet, there's still the same unyieldingly bumpy ride over poor surfaces. Uh, you'll need either smaller wheels or optional variable damper control to sort that out. Mechanical changes to this facelifted version are few. Uh, the 1.5 litre three cylinder petrol unit now used in the base 102 HP Mini 1 as well as in this 136 HP Cooper model has received a few efficiency tweaks. Uh, the diesel range has been slimmed down to a single 116 HP 1.5 litre three cylinder variant uh, in the Cooper D. And the 2 litre four cylinder petrol engine used for the top 192 HP Cooper S and 231 HP John Cooper Works hot hatch variants has been comprehensively refettled. Plus, the optional Steptronic dual clutch automatic transmission now has seven speeds. None of which changes the recipe on offer too much. As before, we don't like the rather bulky manual gear change, uh, but we're impressed not only with this car's cornering agility and urban maneuverability, but also with its surprising aptitude for longer trips. Now that's down to impressive levels of refinement. The engines are also pretty efficient too. This Cooper model's 1.5 litre petrol unit returns 60.1 mpg on the combined cycle and 105 grams per kilometre of CO2. It's hard to think of another car on sale today whose sales are influenced quite as directly by the way it looks as this one. Uh, headlamp styling has always been one of the defining elements of mini design and a lot of work's gone in here to further develop that. Uh, the lights may look much the same as before but the full LED technology behind them is very different. That's particularly if you order the optional matrix adaptive beams which automatically extinguish parts of the lamp that might dazzle other road users. Here we're looking at the three-door hatch version, but Mini's also spun five-door and club and estate body styles off this third-generation F56 platform for those who need a bit more space. Plus, as usual, there's a convertible variant too. This, though, is the body shape that really defines Mininess. And at first glance, not much has changed about the dinky, power-packed profile, which, as before, comes with the no-cost option of a black, white, or body-coloured roof. It's at the rear, though, that this facelifted F56 model is most easily recognisable as the improved post-2017 era design. Uh, these new Union flag-style LED tail lamps are the reason why. Time to take a seat behind the wheel, where you're reminded that cabin quality in modern Mini models really is now the equal of any mainstream BMW you might care to name. Now, if you haven't tried a third-generation F56 series mini model, uh, you may be surprised to find that this huge central display here uh, these days no longer functions as a speedo, less characterfully, but uh, more practically, that has been relocated to a pod in front of the steering wheel where it's flanked with a crescent moon rev counter and a fuel gauge. All of this has freed up this central area for much more infotainical trickery. Uh, the screen is now six and a half inches in size across the range of standard, but here it's been upgraded to 8.8 .8 inches. That's as part of the Navigation Plus pack that includes all the latest mini connected media features. Well, time to take a look in the back. Well, there's good and bad here. Legroom remains very cramped indeed if there's an adult of more than average height in front of you. Um, if that is going to be an issue, then the five-door version of this car, which gets an extra 72 millimetres of length between the front and rear wheels, will obviously suit you better. Uh, what is quite impressive, though, even in this three-door model, is the amount of head and elbow room you get. Let's finish by taking a look in the boot. 
The extra size of this Mark III model enabled Mini to increase cargo capacity by 30% to 211 litres. Uh, with everything flat, uh, surprisingly large 731 litre load capacity area reveals itself. The third generation redesign of this Mini hatch saw the car grow up a little and face its responsibilities, as all of us have to. Yet at the same time, the brand was keen that this car shouldn't lose its fun and joie de vivre, the very attributes that make most customers want to consider one in the first place. Now the midterm updates that we've been reviewing here are mostly aimed at making sure that that doesn't happen. This hatch version being now smarter, better connected and more personalizable than before. In short, in many ways, it's come of age. <laughs>